theme scripture for today is Psalm 46. Psalm chapter 46. Hallelujah. Amen. That is a scripture that has been uh, uh, ringing in my heart and I've been reading it and meditating on the same for the past almost one week, if not longer. Amen? Amen. And um, then when I came to church, I had, you know, other ministers who came before me quoting the same scripture. And I said, God, you are wonderful. Amen. Hmm? He leads his people in the same direction without them consulting one another. Amen. Can you imagine? <laughs> you might, somebody might have thought, you know, um, I told the brethren what I'm going to share on. We will read Psalm chapter 46. The title of our message today is Be Still and Know That I Am God. Amen. Tell your neighbor, Be Still and Know That the Lord is God. <laughs> Tell your other neighbor, be still and know that the Lord is God. Be still and know that the Lord is God. Amen. Amen. So let's read Psalm chapter 46, verse 1 to 11. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling cellar, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolation in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in fire. Verse 10 be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Verse 11. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. Selah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. How does be still and know that I am God apply to our situation? How does it apply to our lives? How does it apply to um, our nation? How does it apply to everybody that is seated here? Hallelujah. It is very important for us to know that God is on the throne. Many people have had all kinds of thoughts in the past um, uh, few days. You know that there are people that spend um, a lot of um, time, a lot of energy, a lot of um, uh, money and resources investing in the campaigns that um, ended last week. Hmm? But... Um, after investing so much, almost like, you know, um, the whole of their lives, they were not successful. And they must be hurting. 
they are in distress. They are um, going, uh, wondering what will come next. But we are told to be still and to know that he is God. Amen. That the Lord is our God. Amen. He is going to do great and wondrous things. We need to um, visit them. We need to talk to them. We need to ring them. We need to um, look for people who are contesting and they were not successful. Look for them and um, at least tell them, it shall be well with you. It is not the end. Huh? There, there are more elections that are coming. Huh? To some, it was need. These elections were either now or never. Life or death. Because some, their ages are um, up there. Okay? And others um, have other issues that are uh, awaiting them elsewhere. So, there are those who got in there to try and um, cement a few things. And we are trusting God that each one of us in this land of Kenya, even during this time of anxiety, when people are waiting and they have been waiting and waiting, this has been the longest wait in all the elections uh, since independence. The longest waiting to know who is going to lead the country. But you know, there is no crisis at the moment. If it goes beyond tomorrow and um, maybe Tuesday, then we can be anxious because we will have a constitutional um, crisis or a constitutional issue to be sorted out. But as we are now, there is no need to worry. There is still time. Yeah. Even if you are told they have only done a hundred as of today, four days or five days after. Eh? They have only uh, confirmed a hundred and there are still 190 to go. And you, you just say, you know, there will be a miracle. Hmm? God will work it out. This 190 that are remaining or whatever number is remaining, within the, that time it will be done. Amen. So don't be in a crisis Amen. without a crisis. Huh? <laughs> we are always told, let us cross the bridge when we get there. Hmm? You know, there was me, there, was, there used to be um, a game we used to play. Um, we used to call it uh, Chap Chap and Allah. Hmm? And then, you know, um, it, was a, it was a concoction of hop, step, and jump. Hmm? What do they call it these days? Triple? Triple jump. Hmm? Where someone runs very fast. Then they have to step on a, a given place. If your foot passes, you are disqualified. Even if you jump and finish the whole thing, you are disqualified. So they come and step there and then hop and try to, to need to... I, 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 I was watching the games and the, some of them were, you know, pushing their legs like that. <laughs> <laughs> to take them further and then learn. Okay? So, when all these issues are around us, let us be still and know that He is God and He is on the throne and all is well. The way we sing, Mambo Sawa Sawa. Mambo sawa sawa Yesu akiwa enzini Mambo sawa sawa Mambo sawa sawa Mambo sawa sawa Those who don't understand Kiswahili Things are already better Things are already better when the Lord is on the throne, things are already better. Things are already better. Things are already better. 
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Ah. Be still in God's presence and know that he is God. When we say be still in God's presence, it sounds very wonderful. It sounds very appealing. It sounds very encouraging. But it's you know, so unfamiliar, eh? such an unfamiliar practice in our lives because most of us or all of us are wired in two different ways. There are those of us who are wired negatively and we always look for mistakes, something to complain about. We always look for where somebody has erred. Even if you enter the house and you find it's clean and well arranged, but then there is a pen that, that dropped on the floor, huh? we will not see this beauty, this clean house, whatever it is. What we will see is, why is that pen there? And maybe somebody, while cleaning and arranging or whatever it is, their pen, you know, <laughs> jumped from the pocket and dropped. And they didn't, they didn't notice. But they had already arranged everything. 99% of that house is clean and is whatever. Then somebody will walk and say, and why didn't you wipe here? If somebody wiped the whole of this building, and left a spot here, or like in me, that um, clumsy thing up there on that screen, that wall. Don't, see, don't look at it. Look at, you know, the beauty of this sanctuary. Amen? Amen? The glory of God that we experience in this sanctuary. So, those who are wired negatively will all the time see negative things. They will look for those specks. Huh? When a wall like this, they will be looking that spot. And some of us are wired positively. Regardless of what happens, we look for something to commend. Hmm? Like, you know, um, uh, there are people, when they are marking exams, they are looking for mistakes. Huh? To deduct marks from you, from 100 or from 10 or from 50, whatever the thing is. But there are those who, are, who mark exams looking for where to add you marks. <laughs> they are looking for where you made a good point and they add you marks. They don't look for mistakes. Huh? So, in which way are you wired? When you get to your house, do you go kicking everybody under the table because they were making noise when you were away? Yet you didn't hear. You just suspect they were making noise. <laughs> huh? So, let us be people that are godly. For us to be still and know that he is God, let us yearn to be godly. And you know, God does not walk around with a big stick looking for Elder Jeremiah. Hmm? Why did you fail in this and that? You did everything else, one to nine, you did very well. But for this one that you did, mm, yeah, that you didn't do, or the one that you didn't, you know, accomplish, God does not do that. He looks for means and ways of helping us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, the Lord, our God, is with us. And since he is with us, we need to be positively wired. Let us look at things. When we are positively wired, regardless of what happens, we say, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Hmm? We'll sort it out when the time comes. That one, no, 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 don't worry, don't worry about that. We'll sort it out, we'll sort it out. That one, it really helps me. When I look at things, 
in a positive way. When I feel I'm negative, my blood pressure goes up. I don't know if my blood sugar also goes up. But uh, the Lord helps me in most cases to be positively wired. Hallelujah. <laughs> Why should we be positively wired? Why? One, because the battle belongs to the Lord. The battle that you are going through, the physical, spiritual, material, financial, domestic, eh? whatever situations, whatever challenges you are going through, even in your relationships, one with another, eh? the Lord is in control. He knows. And he will fight for you. Amen. Amen. Why should we be still? The battle belongs to the Lord. Eh? If you um, get time, we'll, we will not read through the, 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 the scripture. But Exodus chapter 14, verse 13 to 18. Exodus 14, 13 to 18. We find uh, it's part of the story of uh, the children of Israel. When they were um, by the Red Sea. Hmm? One side was the Red Sea. And in the other part of the desert was the army of uh, Egypt coming against them to devour them, to destroy them. And everybody was crying and they came to Moses and were asking him, were there no graves in Egypt that you brought us into the desert to die here? Hmm? Where we cannot be buried. And Moses went to the Lord and he also talked to him. But before he went, he told them, be still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. Can you imagine? Huh? Moses was prophesying to these people. Yes, one side is the sea. You cannot go into the sea. If you go into the sea, you are going to drown. The other side, the army is coming. And the soldiers eh, have, have three things. We are told they have three W's. One is war. Two is wine. Three is women. Hmm? Those are the three W's of, of the soldiers. Eh? So, they will fight. They will um, um, molest women. They will also go and drink wine. When the soldiers were coming and everybody was terrified, I tell you, I believe even Moses himself was terrified because he didn't have a solution. But he was the leader. And everybody is asking him, hmm? He told them, be still. Be still. Be still. Don't be afraid. Be still and see the salvation of the Lord. Are you willing to be still in that situation, in that anxiety that you have so that you may see the works, the wondrous works of the Lord? Hmm? Sing aloud and declare his wonderful deeds. <laughs> The Lord is good to me. Yeah. I tell you. Hmm? When we were going through the crisis in our family, hmm? when I was very sick, huh? 
I had a terminal sickness called leukemia, blood cancer. Huh? For three years, it was not easy. 2015, <laughs> 2016, 2017 were terminal, you know, years eh? for us as a family and for me as Wojambo. Hmm? I would sit in church and I wonder how to keep my head up because I was not getting enough oxygen eh? coming into my head. Constant headaches for 24 hours. Eh? But you know, the Lord kept on ministering to me, be still and know that I am God. Amen. There are those who um, were diagnosed <clears throat> after I was diagnosed and they passed. Within very few months they were gone. There are those who um, uh, were helped in one way or another. But I thank God that he was good to me. Amen. He touched me Amen. and healed me Amen. without going through chemo, without going through radiotherapy. Amen. The Lord is good to me. Amen. He works wonders. Yes. Amen. Amen. And it's because he, the Lord helped me to be still and to know that he is God. Because his word says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Jesus. Yes, and I believed it. Yes. Huh? And he said, he sent his word and healed them of all their diseases. I believed it. Yes. Huh? And I always say, if Jesus said, I believe it. If it is written in the Bible, I will believe it until the return of the Lord or until I die. If it's written here. You won't move me from it. Come with your theology, but <laughs> this is what the word says. Whatever you learned in Bible school, that's yours, yes. But this is what the Bible says. Don't tell me what you understand by it. Tell me what it says. As an ambassador of Christ. Amen. Why should we be still? Huh? You know very well on Tuesday you woke up early. Those of you who woke up early, you went, you did your civic duty. And you finished your responsibility. You know, after dropping your vote or casting your vote, dropping it in that box, you have no control over it. <laughs> From then on, you have no control over that. Whatever, you cannot even retrieve it. If you re try to retrieve it, you will be handcuffed immediately because you are interfering with the electoral process. Okay? So, after casting your vote, we were told, cast your votes, then go home and wait for the results. We got some results, you are still waiting for others. Okay? <clears throat> but you know what? <laughs> you did your part. So, relax. Let everybody else do their part also. If anybody messes with your vote, it is them who will face the consequences, not you. So why should you be anxious? Be still and know that the Lord is God. Amen. Regardless of um, the uh, presidential results, do you know that your life will not change? Do you know that? You will go to the same office and do the same work. Hmm? I remember I was a small, <laughs> was a small uh, young, 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 young fellow, young, young man, in 1963, when um, we had the independence. Huh? And um, I had heard people saying, you know, those who are clerks, those who are messengers, they were saying, when we get independence, I will be a clerk. Hmm? When, you know, uh, the clerks were saying, I will be a supervisor. The supervisors were saying, I will be a manager. And on and on, the managers were saying, go the truth to party Uhuru. I'm becoming director. Do you know that after voting, and after Muse Kenyatta was sworn in, people went back to their same offices. <laughs> Those who were working in the chamber took the jambes and went back to work in the chamber. 
and be paid whatever, even it was 20 cents or 10 shillings or whatever, one shilling, whatever it is per day. They were paid the same thing. Even you, whether it is Maure, Wajakoya, <laughs> why are you laughing? <laughs> whether it is Ruto or Raila, whatever, whoever it will be, eh? when they are sworn in and they go to the office, maybe eh, you got a chance of shaking their hands when they were in the campaign trail. Maybe. Or getting close to them and at least seeing them, like this speaker here, and waving at them eh, when they were standing on those knee, uh, limousines. Do you know that when they are sworn in, <laughs> you might be kept a kilometer away for the next five years? Eh? I thank God, at least, you know, um, the security of Idi Amin Dada in 1973 made a mistake. And they landed where I was. And um, uh, when he got out of the helicopter, <laughs> I rushed. <laughs> I rushed. And Idi Amin, I rushed. <clears throat> Shook his hand. Eh? When other people were running you know, to come and shake I had shook his hand and released. Then I walked away. This hand was not washed. Even eating, I was using the left hand. <laughs> but you know, all these other guys, <laughs> all of them, <clears throat> right now they have tight security. And you know what? They will continue to have tight security. Even the ones who will not be number one. They will continue to have tight security and they will have, you know, other facilities which you and I cannot access. Why be anxious? For other people, the people that you cannot reach, you will not even call them and me, and even if you are calling them, huh? even if you used to have their number and you, you, you call them and you talk, huh? like Wojambo talking to El Dagishuru, hmm? the way we talk. When he becomes president, they change the number. <laughs> you try to call that number, and you are, you are told, you know, even if you know the number, you are told you are not authorized. The, the message comes, you are not authorized to you. Call this number. Number two, we will have rest from our anxieties. Hmm? Why should we be still and know that he's God. We will have rest for from our anxieties. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and, uh, to 30. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Hallelujah. Verse 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come. This is a scripture which has a command and a promise at the same time. We are all commanded to come to Jesus. All of us who have anxiety, all of us who have troubles, we are laboring here and there, we have um, done our campaigns, we have done everything, and we knew this time, this time, Lero Luno. Lero Luno. It's a language spoken in Paris. Hmm? Yani, this day, Leo, Leo is Leo. Hey. Huh? We had me, we had, um, uh, that, that was a slogan of uh, uh, the former me, Vice President, Ankomuji. Hmm? 
when he was campaigning in our villages, he said, Lero Luno, Lero Luno. Meaning, today is today. This day is mine. Huh? You say, Lero Luno. Hmm? And when things went on and went on and went on and went on, he started wondering what it was. Come to the Lord. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is calling us with all our fears. We don't know when the elections are announced, when the presidential elections are announced, how the country will be, whoever will be announced. What? Come to Jesus. Amen. Come to Jesus. Have peace for your soul. Have peace. Have peace. You will f he says, and I will give you rest. Rest means being calm. Eh? In the midst of the storm, being calm. You remember the, 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 the time when Jesus was crossing with his disciples and the storm came and hit the boat in the Sea of Galilee. And they were near. The, the, the water was coming in. The waves were hitting the boat and pouring in water and pouring. And the amount of water they were fetching and pouring out was less than the amount of water that was coming in. So they knew we are in trouble and in danger of drowning. Okay? Or the boat capsizing. And, you know, everybody was fighting and maybe they were crying and they were shouting and they were praying. And Jesus is asleep. Can you imagine? I've been in a boat when um, the, the waters were rough. And it's not <laughs> an interesting thing. Because the boat will go up, then the wave come, passes down and leaves a vacuum. So it comes hitting the water. And you are, whatever is in here comes up to here. <laughs> then before you, you, you recover, you have been thrown up again. And people start throwing up. That's why we, we are to told of sea sickness. Uh, people throwing up in the sea because of that. So, people maybe are throwing up. They need the, the fishermen who are experienced are saying, <laughs> we are in danger. Hmm? We are in danger. So, here, Jesus is asleep. Not because he was very tired. He was asleep. He was at peace. He knew we will cross. He had told them, let us cross over to the other side. They forgot the word of the Lord. <clears throat> the Lord had told them, let us do what? Cross over to the other side. If the Lord has told you that let us cross over to the other side and he is with you, regardless of what you go through, believe you will reach the other side. Amen? Amen. So he woke up. They woke him up and said, oh, okay. So he stood up and said, peace be still. Peace be still. And all the waves and the winds obeyed him. Amen. Then now the disciples started wondering, <laughs> who is this guy? As if they didn't know him. Who is this guy? Yeah? Who is this? That even the winds and the waves can obey him. The ones that were going to kill us, he has calmed them. The anxiety that we had. You remember the story in um, uh, John chapter 7, uh, verse 11 to 16. Jesus asked me, the widow of Nain, who was mourning. She was a widow, and her only son had died. And they were now walking out of the city to go to the graveside. Then Jesus touches the casket and tells the lady, don't cry. Can you imagine? You are in trouble. You are in distress and somebody is telling you don't cry. What will you say? You don't understand what I'm going through. But Jesus knew what he was doing. He touched the casket. 
and he called the young man up. And the young man came up. And after the young man came up, huh, I think he might be looking. Hmm? Somebody, somebody said, he looked in the crowd and said, that is my shirt. Hmm? You are wearing my shirt. <laughs> and you, that phone you are carrying is mine. You know, when somebody has died, people, you know, sometimes, you know, as they are mourning, they mourn with your things. <laughs> Some of them come there to mourn with. <laughs> so you would say, Yo shirt yangu. Yo sim yangu. Na yo trouser ni yangu. Huh? So people wondered, you know, when this guy woke up, they said, ah, Jesus um, brought an appointment for some people, for this widow, but a disappointment too. <laughs> Hallelujah. In John chapter 11, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. His two sisters, Mary and Martha, were very anxious. They were in deep trouble. They were wondering what will now happen. Our only brother has died. Hmm? And his friend, eh, who was healing people around here, eh, we sent word to him, and he never came. Then four days later, he arrives, and he's telling them, I am the resurrection and the life. And they understand, yes, there will be a day of resurrection. Yes, there will be. But for now, <laughs> if you were here, our brother would not have died. He would have lived. And he's telling them, you don't understand. I am the resurrection. What happened to Martha and Mary when Jesus went to the tomb? And he said, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus got up. And he told the people, unwrap him from the grave clothes. And they did. And Lazarus came out of that tomb. What do you think the sisters felt? Did, did they remain anxious again? So they went home now to eat and drink. Yes. The same way. The Lord who raised Lazarus, the God who raised um, the son of um, the widow of Nain, the God who calmed the sea, eh? the Sea of Galilee, the Lord who parted eh? the Red Sea so that the children of Israel may cross through on dry ground is your God and is my God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He is your Lord and he is your God. Amen. 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 What he did yesterday, he will do today and he will do it forever. Amen. Because he is the same yesterday, today and forever. He never changes. It's us who change. Eh? We get old. And we also lose, we change our, 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 uh, our spiritual addresses. But he remains faithful. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Why should we be still and know that um, he is God? Dry eyes. Hmm? Dry eyes. And being still helps us to see that which God is doing and to hear that which he is saying. When we are still and, you know, we are no longer anxious, no longer crying, no longer mourning, no longer wondering what is happening. When we are still and our eyes are dry, hmm, then we can see that clearly see that which the Lord is doing and we can also hear clearly what he is saying in the midst of all the noises around us. In the midst of all the confusion around us, 
we will see what the Lord is saying, is, is doing, and we will see, we will hear what he is saying. Amen. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10 says, Isaiah 3 10, say to the righteous that it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings or the fruit of their labors. Hallelujah. Amen. The God of Israel is with us. The Lord God Almighty is our God. There is nothing that is too hard for him. There is nothing that is impossible even to you and I who believe. Amen. Amen. Everything is possible to us. And all things will work for our good. Those of us who know God and who love him and are the calls according to his purposes. Amen. Amen. Don't be anxious. Don't be afraid. Don't worry. Don't look to the left, run to the left or to the right. Be still and know that he is the Lord. Amen. Amen. So how can we be still while in a crisis? Ask your neighbor, how can you be still when you are in a crisis? This is what Apostle, uh, Apostle Paul wrote to the Philippians in chapter 4. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 9. Philippians 4, 6 to 9. He says, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for what? Nothing. And nothing means? Nothing. nothing. <laughs> Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 7. And the peace of God which surpasses not just passes, but surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Then he gives us good counsel, better counsel now. Verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, not rumor, not social media, not fake news, whatever Things are true. Ile ambao umeshika na kidole chako. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, hmm? whatever things are just, hmm? and I have my uh, learned uh, children here hmm? who deal with justice. Hallelujah. Whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Don't meditate on anything else. These are the things to meditate on. Amen? Amen? The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, this do. And the God of peace will do what? Will be with you. Amen. Amen. Huh? What do you meditate on? When you go to social media, what excites you? When you watch eh, television, read newspapers, magazines, read books, whatever it is, what excites you? Rumor? Huh? You know, um, journalists tell us that, you know, bad news is that which sells. Hmm? It's the only one that sells. 
Eh? I've, I've said it here before. Hmm? During campaign time, eh? people went to churches in different places. Eh? Some did it for years, others did it for a few days, others whatever. And they would go there and stand on the pulpit like this and insult other people. Talk all kinds of wicked things against others. And that's what the journalists would report. And maybe the pastor would be, would be there and preach. Very powerful message. And maybe get some of those people get saved. Eh? And they turned away from uh, their wicked ways. But that was not reported. Did you see any preaching in the churches where, you know, in the news? Akuna. Why? Because they know if people hear so and so, called the other one a cow. Hmm? And the other one called me, that man, a woman. That is what sells. Am I talking things that you understand? Or I'm talking above your heads. Psalm 46 reveals the goodness, the faithfulness, the glory of the Lord. Hmm? That's why we are told when we stay in the word, when we practice what we have um, read, when we go and read verse 1 of Psalm 46 and say, God is our refuge and our strength. Hey, hey. refuge and strength. When you are in trouble, don't call the name of your mother. Don't call the name of your father. They also need help. <laughs> if, if robbers have entered your house, don't call the name of your husband. Call on the name of Jesus. Because your husband or your wife also needs Jesus' help. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Have you ever been in trouble? When you get into trouble again, if you are in trouble now, know that God is your refuge and your strength. He is your present help in trouble. Present. Present. Do you know that right now the Lord is with us? When Jesus was here, when he was um, crossing the Sea of Galilee, he was not in Nairobi. Do you know that? He was not in Jerusalem. Leave alone Nairobi. Let's talk of Palestine land. Okay? He was not in Jerusalem. He was not in Bethlehem. He was not um, by the river Jordan. He was, that time he was crossing. When he came to Jerusalem, he was not in Bethany. The people in Bethany suffered when Jesus was in Jerusalem because he was God in man, in a physical body like yours and mine. Hmm? When Professor Igosangwa is here, he is not in Kakamega, in Masinde Muriro. He is here. <laughs> okay. If you need his signature, something has to be done to get that document to him, to put his signature. Okay? But right now, after Jesus went and sent the Holy Spirit, now God is everywhere we are. <laughs> That's why we are told he is our present help in trouble, in time of, other versions say, in time of need. Huh? The Lord is your refuge and strength in that time. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth should change and the mountains, though the mountains slip into 
the heart of the sea. Yeah? People say they will run to the mountains. And we are being told here in verse 2 that those mountains might one day sink. Those mountains might collapse and sink in the sea. If they sink and you, are, you had run to the mountain, what will happen to you? You will sink with it. So let us purpose in our hearts that, you know, we be still and know that he is God. Be still when disaster strikes. Be still when issues come up in your life and uh, cause a lot of trouble. When your relationship isn't um, happily ever after. Mm? When your marriage is shaky. When um, your family is not um, uh, having cohesion. Uh, the children are going this way and... Um, the parents are, the, the, one parent is going that way and the other one is going that way and thinking the other way, be still. Be still and know that he is God. So be still, brethren, and know that I am God, says the Lord. Amen. God bless you. I want to request you to stand. I want to welcome the worship team. I want us to sing, you know, when the oceans rise and thunders roll, I will soar with you above the storms. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know that you are God. Guide me.
Hallelujah. Our Father and our God, we come before you this day that regardless of all that we have gone through, all that we are going through right now, and that which we will go through in the future, help us to be still and know that you are God because you are our God. You are our refuge. You are our strength in time of need, in time of trouble. You are our God and you are our refuge. So this day, we commit our lives in your hands and we pray, Almighty God, that you give us peace in every area of our lives. Remove every form of anxiety. Remove every work of darkness. Anything that may cause us worry, that may cause us concern, O oh Lord, we surrender to you. We pray, Almighty God, that you release your power, release your anointing, release your counsel, release your comfort, release your consolation, O oh Lord, to each one of us. Touch all our people, O oh Lord, who contested and they did not succeed. We pray that you give them peace in every area of their lives. We pray, Almighty God, that you provide for them all their needs according to your riches in glory in Christ Jesus. We pray, Almighty God, that you will help each one of us to trust you and that regardless of who will be announced as the winner of the presidential elections, we will believe you, almighty God. We will pray for them. We will lift them before you, O oh God, that your hand may rest upon them, that you may give them wisdom, that you may lead them and guide them in the way that they should go, O oh God, so that they may lead this nation into higher heights, um, economically, spiritually, emotionally, socially, in every way, almighty God. There will be unity and there will be oneness in this land of Kenya. Our hope is in you. Those who do not know you as Lord and Savior, may you release your conviction into their hearts that they may accept you as Lord and Savior. They may confess you as their Lord and Savior. They may believe you. They may go out and witness for you. They may be your ambassadors, O oh Lord, wherever they go. Our hope and our trust is in you because you are our God. You are our refuge, our present help in time of need and in time of trouble. We pray that as we leave this place, going to various destinations, May your presence go ahead of us and go with us. Minister to us in your own divine way. Meet each one of us at our very point of need. Touch those who are sick and heal them. Those who are troubled, give them peace. Remove every form of anxiety and your name be glorified. We thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.